Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Coffee with Tea. I am your host, Tanya Tyler, and I'm excited because we're going to be talking about how to live your fulfilled potential. And so I want to introduce my guest, Miss Michelle Davis. Welcome to the show, my friend. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm so, I'm so excited to be here. pleasure to have you on. You are a fellow podcaster. That's how we connected. So Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to hearing your story. But first, before we dive into it, please tell a little bit about who you are and what you do. And and we'll dive into the conversation after that. Sure. My name is Michelle Davis. I'm host of the Boss Experience podcast, and that's spelled D-A, in case you want to look for it on um, your favorite podcast platform. I am also a business coach and strategist, but I wasn't always a fabulous business coach and strategist. In a previous life, I actually spent a, you know 20 plus years in nonprofit services. So I've worked with so many different populations, everyone from the formerly incarcerated to domestic violence survivors, to sexual assault survivors, to chronically ill individuals. And so over the span of probably the last 16 years of my career, what I did was I developed programs. So I've, you know, I've not only developed programs, but I've turned kind of flipped organizations around in terms of, you know, if it was a toxic work environment, I would come in as a program director and I would reverse it, you know, through a series of steps. I also implemented a trauma-informed program model for a domestic violence shelter that I ended up running for about six, seven years. And, but the bulk of my work was developing, you know, these robust programs, number one, that would get funded um, by the, you know, government or foundations, but number two, that were impactful for the clients and not in any order of priority, but, you know, the, the, you know, coaching programs, uh, group, you know, very robust programs, some of them serving as many as 100 and some of them designed to focus on the, you know, the progress of the individual. Right. Right. Sounds amazing. Like, I mean, you know, I, when you said you had all the years of experience in the nonprofit space, was it hard to transition into doing your own entrepreneur work? I mean, what, what, maybe for those who, were there some great lessons that you've learned from the nonprofit space as you were converting? I mean, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think the whole time I was, you know, there was part of my nonprofit journey that I absolutely loved, but And I think toward the end, when I made the leap to entrepreneurship, I had landed in like one too many toxic work environments. And so I was thrust (laughs) into entrepreneurship. But one of the things I didn't do in the time while I was actually working, I never took the time to think, you know, what do I like? What do I not like? What's, you know, what interests me? What do I like outside of this, this career? And so I focused a lot on my career, on my career. I was what you would call a workaholic. You know, I enjoy, you know, I had a, a child that kind of changed that like later in, 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 in years, but before my having my daughter, I, I enjoyed working until like seven at night. That was like therapy for me, but in the interim, I never really tapped into me. And it wasn't until I was kind of in this one work environment where I was feeling like, oh my God, this is not, <laughs> this, is, this is crazy. They're, they're not setting me up for success. Um, in fact, it was downright toxic and nasty. Um, and I said, you know, I remember sitting in my living room and I said, you know, I, you know, I walked off my job that day, by the way, because it was like one of those things where I didn't know what I was going to do. And, but it was also one of those things where something had happened so bad and so egregious (laughs) that either I walk out with my dignity or I sit here and be somebody's fool. (laughs) And it was just on another level type of thing. And it was directed to me. And so I was just like, 
I, I think I'm going to walk out of here with my dignity. But then when I came home, I sat on my couch. I said, I don't know what I'm going to do because <laughs> I got to get a job. And I tried to get a job. But, you know, whether it's, it was an age thing or whatever the case, because I was over, over 40 at this time, I don't know what it was, but I couldn't find a job to save my life, despite my, you know, extensive work history, despite my master's degree and the countless interviews, I just didn't land anything. Wow. So I decided one day sitting on my couch, I said, I'm going to start a business. And I didn't know where that came from. I had no idea what that meant because I didn't know any, per, I didn't personally know any entrepreneurs. There were no entrepreneurs in my family. And I decided I was going to start a business and it wasn't about the business. It was about what that business would offer me um, as a human being, as an individual. And that was freedom and flexibility, but also to be in charge of my own, own path. And over the course of the, all that time I was in nonprofit, I was in management. And my highest level uh, position was associate vice president. And in that role, and I was given the title, but never like the, the go ahead to carry out my own vision. Right. And it was like, you know, I have this title, you know, but what is my vision? Like, what do I want to do? And so I felt like I needed to figure that out. And so you know, in the course of starting a business or making this big transition from career to, you know, nonprofit career to entrepreneur, I had to fall on my face a few times because I really wasn't clear on what made me happy. I really, I also wasn't clear on who I was as a person. So I wasn't, I didn't learn those things until I began to ask myself that, that question, because think about it. I'm coming off of this long career. I am whatever my last job title was. That's who I am. I, I didn't know how to be anything else. And so uh, when I didn't have that anymore, I felt like I was without an identity. Mm. And that was, it was a very weird feeling because I was um, in my forties and I felt like I did not have an identity. I didn't know who I was, what I liked, what I enjoyed. And so I had to go through this process of discovering what I was passionate about and what I enjoyed doing. I, I was never one for hobbies. And so um, it was just an interesting time. So I went through this process of trying to kind of discover who I was. And the first thing I had to do was be honest that mm -hmm. I had no idea that there was a problem because I think we can know something's wrong and we can just go with the flow and forget <laughs> you know, that we got this problem we need to, to solve. If I'm going to go in, into business, I need to know who I am. What do I want? I didn't want to create another job for myself. And I felt like my entire life, I had been like this little robot, like, eh, 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 eh. you know, I would go, <laughs> I went to college. I got the bachelor's degree. I got the master's degree. I did all these things. I did everything I was supposed to. And here, yeah, here I am jobless, right? And like I said, it was one of those things either you walk out with your dignity or you be there and be someone's fool. And it was just a nasty situation. So first of all, you have to be honest that you don't know who you are. You have no idea who you are. Then you need to set forth on a plan to get clarity mm. on what your path is. Because as you're discovering your purpose, your passion, whether you're coming out of a marriage um, which, you know, I wasn't too long out of, uh, out of a divorce. So I was coming away from that identity as well, that I had never really actually dealt with the fact that I, yeah, I knew I was divorced, but like, who was Michelle? It's like evolving? coming to terms. Right. Who was Michelle evolving into? And so, um, so the first point, like I said, be honest, know that there's a problem and reflect how your impact, it would be my second point. You know, how is this whole thing impacting me? You know, am I, you know, depressed? Am I like enthusiastic about finding my passion? Like, am, am I sad about the things that I'm leaving behind? Because it's not an easy uh, transition to go from a career into, you know, whatever this life that I sat and thought of <laughs> on my couch, right? That's not easy. So I need to talk about how I'm impacted. I was scared for one. I was terrified because <laughs> I, I had a daughter I had to support. 
And I had no idea where my next income was going to come from. And um, so, you know, you got to identify that, you know, what are you feeling? I was scared. I was hopeful, but I was also, you know, there was an inkling of doubt too. Like, girl, you're going to, you can fall flat on your face doing this. (laughs) But the point is, is that you need to reflect about what you're feeling, how you're feeling it. And, and how it's impacting you, how is it impacting your family if you have children that are old enough to understand what's happening because you don't want to bring fear upon them either, thinking mommy doesn't have a job or we're going to be homeless. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you start putting too much out there, you, you'll you create fears in your in your children or in your spouse or partner. Right. So, and then the other thing is, um, you got to figure out what it is you need to do. So am I, so this would be the third point. Think about what this new life looks like and what you need to do to get it started. Right. So the, and so by doing that, you need to think, well, am I doing something new or am I doing, or am I tapping into a skill I already have? Right. Right. Um, One big mistake I did was I thought I went in internet land you know, and I got lost. <laughs> right, right, right. And I felt like I needed to learn something new. Right. To do something I love. So essentially, I was starting my business backwards. Right. Because, I, I, yeah. I, I, I love what you're going with it. And I want to take a moment to say that Michelle has been dropping nuggets since she started talking about her journey. So I want to take a moment and, and remind everybody, if you've been enjoying it, please give us a thumbs up. Maybe hit us down with a comment below because I want to know some of the common mistakes what she's about to dive into. So please, Michelle, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just want to mm-hmm. remind everybody to give us a thumbs up. Please. <laughs> and let us know. How, you know, she's dropping some gems. So, you know, Michelle, please, you know, continue your story because like, like you said, you talk about being honesty. And reflecting on um, how you're showing up and processing your um, emotions and communicating. So you were about to share, what was your biggest, you said your biggest mistake was? Was looking outside to try and figure out what I enjoy doing. Instead of just asking myself, like really going deep, you know, whether it's through, um, you know, some type of meditation, whether it's through journaling, get really getting in tune with who I was. I, I didn't do that until later. And so I initially started started off looking outside of myself to find that figure out what made what I was passionate about that that's a process that takes place inwardly and so um, I allowed myself to get lost in social media land and so you know I ended up like going in different directions some of them a lot of them were <laughs> the directions I was heading in were in the wrong <laughs> just in the wrong path so once I kind of said, okay, so if I'm going to, you know, I need to look within, I need to, you know, here I'm coming with all this experience and education. And when I say education, I'm not talking about just college. I'm talking about life experience as individuals, especially as you age, you're coming with robust experience in life, in, in just everything, your, your workplace, what skills do you actually have? You don't need to look outside unless you just want to desperately do something new, of course, but you don't need to look outside. So I spent, I wasted a lot of time looking outward instead of looking inward. But once I did, I was able to kind of dissect what skills I had. You know, here I was, I was a manager for, you know, 16 years. I knew program development and that's how I kind of transitioned into helping professional service providers create their signature coaching program. I've been creating programs for, you know, over almost two decades. So why would I not tap into my experience? And so the other thing I had to do as, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, what work do I need to do? What training do I need? Do I need to get coaching? Do I need to take this course? Like, because once you tap into your skills, how do you adapt it to what you're doing now? you know, mm-hmm. this new life you're creating. So you may need to develop some additional skills for that. And then the other thing is you want to allow yourself to dream without boundaries. So as you're discovering your passion, you want to do it unfiltered. 
you know, think about everything you enjoy doing. What makes you happy? What has put a smile on your face throughout the years? And so you want to capture that in a journal and you want to write it down so that you can always go and reflect on that. And so I, I did that. And that's the fourth point. Give yourself permission to be bold. Give yourself permission to dream. And my fifth point is get support. Don't, dis, you know, enlist on discovering your passion alone. If you have family, if you have uh, kids, you know, a partner, you know, your mom, whomever is in your life, get support in this new journey. Not validation, but support. Because sometimes we look to people, you know, to validate what we're doing. And if your dreams are too big and they don't see your vision, they could end up shooting that vision down. They could end up, you you know, making you feel like you're crazy and and you're going to pull away. You're not going to pursue your passion. But if you get, you figure out who's supportive, not everybody in your life is supportive and you know exactly who they are. (laughs) You know exactly which friends you don't tell your dreams to. You know exactly which family members you need to stay away from. But look look at your life and see who you can get support from. And if you don't have anyone in your life that's supportive, find people that have a common vision for what it is you want to do. For me, it was starting a business. For someone else, it may be something else. But I had to get in the room with people that shared my passion. So that I could find, you know, mentors, I could find partners, you know, and I say partners, not love interests, but partners in this new venture I was going into. Right, right. Yeah. So that is kind of my, uh, that was my process for discovering my passion. And in it, I realized that, you know, I had been selling myself short. I wasn't allowing myself to to dream or do anything outside of my career. Right. And that. That's not fulfilling for anyone. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So like I said, I, thank you for sharing your process because it's like, there's a lot of things I cannot, I cannot relate to the, um, I always say the word compartmentalizing your skills because That's we don't, I don't think we, <laughs> I don't, we, we never take enough inventory list of our, our, our own skills. So thank you for bringing that up. And, and you know, you like, we could always continue this conversation. So I haven't even got to the, my unofficial question yet, but that's my unofficial question. You can maybe come back and we can dive a little bit more into this stuff because I think you, you've got some really great process that a lot of people, like I said, didn't really, or, you know, don't take inventory enough of them, their skills. And I think that's something to really be, as you say, fulfill your potential, your potential means within you. I think that was a really key point that a lot of people are not paying attention to. So, Michelle, you've been dropping nuggets, and I want to make sure that um, I take. What's the one thing you want people to take away from your interview today? If they don't hear anything else, what's the one thing you want them to take away today? That God did not bring you to this world to be average. God brought you to this world to be happy and fulfilled and to live your life's passion. Right. So you got to take action on that. Beautiful, beautiful. And you know, I got a shout out. We are fellow uh, podcasters, of course. And so that leads me to then my next question. Where can people find more information about you, your services and what you do? You can visit me on my website. Uh, my website is M-I-C-H-E-L-E-D-A-V-I-S-N-Y-C.com. And that's pronounced Michelle Davis, N-Y-C.com. And that's Michelle with one L. Um, and then also people can tune into the podcast. So my podcast is The Boss Experience and the is spelled D-A, just like the baby and all the other does out there. <laughs> so it's The Boss Experience podcast. And that my podcast goes beyond just, you know, it, it's a business podcast, but we go into things like what we're talking about here today, you know, finding your passion. We go into everything that goes into being an entrepreneur. And being an entrepreneur is more than just getting your next sale. It's really, you know, dealing with the confidence issues, dealing with the self-esteem issues, dealing with the baggage you're probably bringing in from, you know, your childhood or wherever into your life. And that's creating fear and creating confidence. And so we talk about the real boss experience and it's unfiltered 
And so, yeah, you can find the Boss Experience on your favorite podcast platform, or you can go to the Boss Experience podcast.com. Thank you. Again, make sure you check it out. Um, again, here's my unofficial question. Again, I think I might have said, would you be willing to come back and maybe take a deeper dive into some more processes and, and, and let's talk about being the boss? Absolutely. I'd love to. Thank you. <laughs> And again, thank you for your sharing your wisdom. And I remind everybody who tuned in that, yes, feedback is always welcome. Remember, the links that Michelle mentioned will be posted down in the description box below. So please make sure you check it out down there and below. If you've enjoyed epi- this episode, please give us a like. Hit that smash button. Let us know how you're, how you're enjoying the show. Maybe follow up with some comments down below. And again, if you want to continue to get more insights that like what Michelle dropped today and, you, and other great in- interviews, <laughs> I'm going to have a little tongue-tied moment, so please forgive me. And more interviews, please hit that subscribe button over there. And remember, take things in stride, go with the flow, and create your own path. And we'll see you back here on another episode of Coffee with Tea. All right. Bye-bye.